Hello everyone, welcome to yet another edition of Real Crimes on my channel. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment and to share. And if you're an old subscriber, welcome back and thank you for stopping by. So in today's uh, episode, we want to talk about the death of a young girl or a young lady, a young woman by the name Zanele Moyo. Zanele Moyo was Professor Jonathan Moyo's daughter. She was one of his five daughters. So yeah, Zanele Moyo died in Cape Town and her death was surrounded by a lot of mystery and a lot of unanswered questions. So let's just start with the professor himself. Who is Professor Jonathan Moyo? So a lot of people actually, people like me, know Professor Jonathan Moyo from the days of 100% local content. That's Professor Jonathan Moyo from the days of, um, I don't know, he was in charge of information or something like that. And he was, he's the person that introduced the 100% local content on uh, our local channels, ZTV and ZBC, which saw the rise of a lot of urban groovers. A lot of young people in the country went into music and um, their music was constantly played on radio and like that saw Zimbabweans, you know, appreciating their own local talent. And for me, I think really that was a good move that um, helped a lot of Zimbabweans, a lot of Zimbabwean artists to actually discover themselves and to be discovered out there. Uh, Professor Jonathan Moyo also, um, by the time he went out of office, I think he was the Minister of um, ed Higher Education, Tertiary something something, and he was that was surrounded by controversy. Of course, uh, there was a time when um, there was an issue of some monies that went missing, and 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 and. and you know, zim there for something, you know, yeah. Other than that, Professor Jonathan Moyo is also known for being, uh, these are not my words, a venom spitting viper who finds pleasure in hurting the defenseless. So Professor Jonathan Moyo is known for wanting to comment on anything and everything and also for not being so kind, like, yeah. He was known for never showing his human side and always uh, just spitting things out. For instance, when Itai Zamara went missing, uh, Professor Jonathan Moyo was quoted as saying, by then he was the Minister of Information and Publicity, I think. So he was quoted as saying that uh, probably Itai Zamara was just, uh, he had just left the country because we have very porous borders. People step in and step out of the country anytime. So you could have been one of those people that actually left the country. And he also described what this cry for bring back Itai Zamara is a publicity stunt. He thought, he said it was just um, an attention seeking gimmick. And at one stage he also said that people go missing every day. Like what's so special? Only one person goes missing and you make a fuss out of it. Like people go missing all the time. So why are you even talking about it? Zamara? Of course, years later, he retracted those words and um, yeah, sort of apologized, you know, kind of apologized. But anyway, that's Professor Jonathan Moyo. Uh, currently, he is in self-imposed exile in some African country. From my understanding, he's in Kenya, which is where his wife is from. So apparently he is yeah, in exile there. I don't know, maybe. Guys, I really want to apologize for my voice. Uh, my job is calling for a lot of shouting, like I'm working with small children these days. So I do a lot of raising voice. I, I have to raise my voice a lot. So my voice is not really good. But anyway, let's go back to our story. On the 17th of October, 2015, the nation of Zimbabwe woke up to the news that uh, Professor J 
Jonathan Moyo's daughter, Zanile Moyo, had died in Cape Town. It was reported that she had been found dead in her apartment. Zanile was actually a student at the University of Cape Town studying international relations. So it is said that um, she was with a Zambian guy and her friend Nicole went to their apart to her apartment and then she Zanele told that told Nicole that um, this Zambian guy just identified as Steven was taking her out for dinner and Nicole had actually said her goodbyes and left but it is said that around 9 30 at night um, Stephen called Nicole using Zanele's phone and said, Nicole, please come over to Zanele's apartment and lock up. Your friend is just passed out. So she said, she, Nicole says she assumed that they had gone out and had too much to drink and her friend would be okay. And also she was too busy to even go there because her mom had just visited as well. Now, who is the Stephen guy? So it is said that Stephen was a Zambian guy who had been introduced to Zanele like two weeks ago by another Zambian Zimbabwean guy. Okay, I don't remember their names. I'm just going to call them guy, guy. So a Zimbabwean Zambian guy who was half Zimbabwean, half Zambian, had introduced Stephen to Zanele two weeks, be two weeks before. And uh, Stephen had just suddenly like fallen for Zanele. He wanted a relationship with her. And it is said that by some people that actually knew the two, it is said that Stephen had was kind of obsessed with Zanele. It was not a, a normal relationship that he wanted. Like he was stalking her. He was obsessed with her. He always wanted to be with her. And yeah, so people actually were not comfortable with the way he was advancing towards her. The people felt that he was being too pushy and he was uh, resembling some uh, obsession. Okay, so... Back to Nicole. Nicole left Stephen and Zanile together. And when um, she couldn't come to lock up like what Stephen had suggested, oh, by the way, when Stephen actually called Nicole and told her to come and lock up, he's also said to have said that he was going back to Zambia because his father had just died. Okay. So anyway, uh, days, um, so that was a Wednesday night. Thursday night, there's no news from, from Zanele. There's no news from Stephen. Friday, no news. Zanele was trying to call. Uh, sorry, Zanele's mom was trying to call Zanele and she couldn't get hold of her. And then that was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. And then eventually on Sunday, Zanele's mom suggested that Nicole finds a locksmith and go to Zanele's apartment and break in. So they went there to the apartment. Nicole, um, the caretaker of the community or of the complex, and the locksmith, they went there. They broke down the door, and what they found was really shocking. They found Zanile face down and in a pool of blood. And it was said that she was already dead. And she was wearing the same clothes that Nicole had seen her wearing on Wednesday. Okay. So they called in the police. And it was said that the, the, the caretaker dragged her from the bathroom because she was on the bathroom floor. He dragged her from the bathroom to the lounge, probably trying to see if there was still life in her or what. But yeah, uh, the scene of, of this the scene in the apartment was described to be like there was blood on the floor suggesting it could have been blood that was um that the, the marks that could have been made when the body was being dragged probably they would try they, they thought they could resuscitate her they thought probably she had just been in an accident and they could resuscitate her but anyway that was not um that could not be done because she was already dead Okay, so they called in the police and the police took the body and the professor was actually informed that his daughter had died when he was addressing some uh, members of staff at the National University of Science and Technology. By then, he was the Minister of Education, Education and Tertiary, something, something. Yeah, so he was at the National University of Science and Technology addressing a gathering there of um, staff members. 
that's when he was told that his daughter had been found dead okay so after he confirmed that she had died he actually tweeted that um, his angel had died and obviously people being people I mean we are Africans people responded even people from uh, the opposition political parties actually they expressed their condolences to the Moyo family and to the professor and one of the people what then happens Sandele is said to have been died is, is said to have died what happens next thing that happened was the professor and his friend who was the professor's friend Philip Chiangwa can you imagine so the professor and his friend Philip Chiangwa together with the professor's lawyer went to Cape Town to process to probably find answers as well as to bring Zanelli's body back home like this is a terrible time I mean no parent should ever have to bury their child no matter how ruthless you are no matter how bad this parent is I don't think there's any parent who should bury their child so anyway the professor and his good friend PC and the lawyer went to uh, went to they flew to Cape Town to see, try and get answers. When they got there, uh, there were no answers. They had to wait for the postmortem results. And before the postmortem results were presented to their family, Philip Chiangwa, Professor Moyo, we you know, yeah, we need to know what happened. We have to tell the world what happened. People must investigate. They had already labeled it a murder before they even knew the results of the postmortem. Oh yes. One other thing that was found in the apartment was some, yeah, that was also found in the apartment. And Nicole had actually said before she left, this Zambian man was actually smoking this thing, you know? Uh, so when they went to investigate in the apartment, that thing was also found there suggesting that they could have been doing it together or maybe he was doing it alone and she was just watching but anyway when they before they got the post-mortem results they had labeled it a murder and they were requesting that the south african police must investigate this murder and they must bring the culprit to book you know like i always say when somebody dies under mysterious conditions circumstances we always want somebody to pay so probably that was what was driving the professor and his friend and his friend even said he even vowed pc vowed to find those two zambian boys by himself that was 2015. mr pc have you found the boys yet i don't know i don't know but anyway uh after the post-mortem results were presented to the family the professor and his good friend went mom to date we don't know what killed her they did not tell us we're all waiting for them to come public and say yes the postmortem results said this 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 the scientists have proven that this girl was murdered but no they went mom nobody said anything suggesting that whatever was found in the postmortem result was probably what would they were expecting or it was something that was not comfortable for them to share with the public so they had to keep it a family secret which is okay which is actually okay because yeah that's their child after all they had no business like telling the rest of the world what she died of if they're not comfortable talking about it and because of that people started speculating like could it have been killed? Could she have died of an overdose? Is it possible that um, she had taken something? Because her sister said that Zanile was actually, okay, she was battling depression. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the right English. She was battling depression for a long time. And she wasn't sure what could have been troubling her at this point. So now that the postmortem results are not being told to people, people are wondering, could she have inflicted it on herself? Is it possible that she actually took her own life? Is it possible that she took an overdose or something? Like, you know, drugs or something? Yeah. And yeah, nothing was ever said about that. But however, uh they actually requested for a toxicology report and according to the south african uh, 
toxicology department of a certain hospital that was in the in Cape Town, a river something. Uh, they said it was going to take them at least six years for them to be able to get that report. Okay, it was going to take them at least six years for them to be able to release that report. So they decided they were going to bring her body home and have local people do a post-mortem yet again. So now the post-mortem results that were done locally in Zim, they were never revealed. But this is what was revealed. When the post-mortem people were doing the post-mortem, they realized that Zanile's heart was missing. There was no heart. <sighs> now, a specialist who has been practicing for 19 years, uh, whose name I will not name, <laughs> I will not say his name, but he said that for the 19 years that he has been practicing, he has never seen um, people taking out a whole organ to do a post-mortem. He said they take small pieces of tissue and put them in little containers and they go and run tests. So they're basically testing for um, drugs, they're testing for any poison, they're testing for you know anything, anything that could kill somebody. So this time, the fact that a whole heart was missing, um, there were suggestions that the South African authorities could have been trying to hide something, some sort of evidence. But then again, how can they hide evidence when they know that this thing could have been done by a Zambian? Why would they want to protect a Zambian? So they are suggesting that probably it was hiding evidence or um, somebody was just careless and did not replace the heart. because. When they do a post-mortem, according to what I read, the body is supposed to be left the same way it was before the post-mortem was done. So all the organs are supposed to be there unless they were donated for education purposes or for um, like an organ donor of which the family has to approve. Of which this girl, we don't know when she died, actually, they gave the um, on her death certificate, they wrote 17 October, which is the date that she was found. But we don't know because there was also no time of death. The pathologist or the people that did the postmortem did not bother to determine time of death. So a lot, like a lot, is just happening. A lot was surrounding her death. Like, like there's a lot of people hiding, trying to hide things there. You know, people are trying to hide things like. Who is being protected? Nobody really knows. But after the heart was, it was discovered that there was no heart. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, that that caused some diplomatic tension between the two countries. It was temporary, it was short-lived, but it was there. How do you explain that such a reputable institution that um, did the post-mortem would not put back the heart? What happened to the heart? Why did they take it out instead of just taking a small piece of tissue from a heart? Why did they have to take out the whole heart? Okay, that caused some tension. And the tension actually was resolved when the Minister of Health from South Africa had to fly into the country, into Zimbabwe, to meet up with the Minister of Health of Zimbabwe. By that time, it was Dr. David Pararenyatwa. So they had to meet and talk and deliberate over it and, you know, Apologies were issued and yeah, but the heart was never found. Trust me, the heart was never found. So she was buried without a heart. Yeah. And the report of the post-mortem was only presented to her family later after she had already been buried. And that's when they were also told that they buried her without a heart because they couldn't find the heart when they were doing the examination when they're doing the post-mortem. Now that's sad. So, what do, how do people feel about this whole thing? How do people feel about this? You know, it is not normal in our Zimbabwean culture, our African culture, to mock somebody who has just lost a loved one or to use somebody's death to um, sort of move your own agenda to use somebody's death to sort of overtake somebody because 
now they are mourning now they're in a bad space right but this is what i read from a certain article okay the death of zanele actually helped professor moyo to show his human side because it is believed that okay he's a ruthless person i mean he's ruthless with his words so when he was giving a speech at his daughter's funeral he actually broke down and he had to be pulled off the podium by people assisting him so that he could kind of you know cry in private that showed the human side of the professor and people were actually surprised that he has that side now come on how can he not have that side isn't he human but no, the reason actually people are surprised is because of the utterances that he did when Itai Zamara went missing. And somebody actually said, what he suffered is nothing compared to what the Zamara family suffered. He had the chance to bury his daughter, giving him closure. The Zamara family never got that chance. So yes, he can mourn and he can actually go to her grave. But what about the Zamara family? And people were actually saying that, well, this is nothing compared to what the ZANU PF and including Professor Moyo have done to millions of Zimbabweans. Millions of Zimbabweans have been displaced from their homes and they have had to live in other countries to run away from the poverty, to run away from the economic situation, to run away from just the politics itself, like just running away for their lives. And then he has the nerve to mourn one child. What, what is that? How many people have been killed under his watch? Why would he be mourning one child? Of course, those words don't sound right. I mean, like, that, that doesn't sound right. You cannot say that. The most controversial one that I read was one that was said by a certain somebody say called Wajri Jena. Now, he actually accuses... The professor of killing his own daughter for political gains uh, how that is supposed to help him I don't know but according to Wajge Jenna he says professor Jonathan Moyo is somebody who would do anything for power he was even involved in the what we call the dark world of traditional healers and you know seeking power and you know, getting power from things, from people, from traditional healers, from juju, from muti, whatever you want to call it. So he is said to have been very close to Sevia Kasukwere. Was accused of spending 14 nights sleeping on a grave. And it is said that after he had finished his 14 nights of sleeping on a grave, when he came to parliament he wanted to shake hands with everyone so these guys are being were being accused of practicing black magic and it was also said that moyo could have been also involved and um yeah it's possible that he killed his own daughter for black magic mm. I think if you remember very well, there was a photo of Sovia Kasukure that once circulated. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. If I find it, I will definitely insert it. That was found, that circulated where he was going into a traditional healer's um, shrine. It is said that Professor Jonathan Moyo was also very much involved in that. And it is possible that he actually took his own daughter's life as a way of advancing his power. According to Ajgen Jena, he is very capable of doing that because that's how much he wants power. And he also says the fact that her heart was, was missing, it's, it's possible that, yes, this, the South African authorities could be hiding something. It could be that they were just careless or it could be witchcraft. Somebody used that heart for something else. And who? Who could gain from using that heart other than her father? So yeah, it is believed that, well, somebody suggests that he could have a hand in her death. The same person also suggested that, I don't know if you guys remember Jackie Madondo, the Jackie Madondo of Tengu Ayakwana, 
the Jackie Madondo of the Gospel Train, the lady who used to sing with Ivy Combo. Yeah, the talented, beautiful Jackie Madondo who passed on in a car accident that also claimed her child's life. The Revue Vito sisters, just after they, they did the come to Victoria Falls, down in Zimbabwe. Yeah, it was rumored that she was actually having an affair with the professor. And um, after the affair came out in the form of a child, he decided, nah, I'm not going to have this on my hands. And it is believed that he had a hand in her death. So Wajge Jena says, whoever trusts the professor is very naive because he is a political prostitute. Remember, he was once at one stage he was a, an independent candidate. He went, he was in Zanu PF, left, became an independent candidate, um, went against Zanu PF, and then he came back. So yeah, he says whoever trusts him is very naive because that man will do anything for power and he will do anything to protect his name, including killing. And he suggested that he actually killed Jackie Madondo. Of course, I've heard, I heard that rumor back then, those were years ago when Jackie passed on, that she had been murdered by somebody who was very powerful, but I never got to know the name. But now for my reading, I just saw that, yeah, it was suggested that it was the professor who actually did it, who ordered her hit. But I think Jackie Madondo passed away in an accident, I think, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so that was it. So Zanele passed on and she was buried at Glen Forest. And yeah, it was a very emotional um, sent off where the professor actually broke down and people were actually like surprised that he has a human side. Of course he has a human side, come on. And she was described by her sister as somebody who was very smart and too matured for her own age okay but she was also quick to point out that she had been battling depression and she could have been going through some stuff at the time of her passing to date there is no public record of what happened to her if it's there i haven't come across it um we still don't know what killed her but i suppose her family knows because the two postmortems that were done in and out of the country were never dis disclosed to the public, but they were definitely disclosed. The results were definitely disclosed to the family. So the family knows, but the public does not know, which is okay. Which is okay because, I mean, that's that's a private thing. They probably don't want to share with us. So yeah, she was buried in November. Um, yeah, at Glen Forest, and that was 2015. Zanile Moyo, who had only turned 20 in October of 2015. She was just barely 20. She was very young and yeah, died a mysterious death that we probably will never know. We will probably never know what actually happened to her, but I'm sure her family knows. I will have to do a follow-up story on Jackie Madondo. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, if you... Come on, guys, you need to comment. Tell me, what do you think happened to Zanile? Who, what do you think happened to Stephen? Who could have Stephen been? Could he really have been uh, somebody who had been assigned to work and get Zanile out of the way? Is it possible that because he was obsessed with her, he suggested something to her and she didn't um, agree and maybe they fought until she died. Oh, by the way, the lawyers and the doctors in Zimbabwe actually were requesting from the South African authorities um, the results that they did concerning drugs in her body, concerning rape, if at all she was raped and um, results concerning what she had eaten, if possible that she had died of poison, food poisoning, but they never got any of those results. 
according to um, what I've read, the South African authorities say that that will come uh, with the toxicology report, which takes at least six years for people to be able to get it. That was 2015. I think we should be having our report by now. We need to get our report. So what do you think happened to, to Zanele? What, what could have killed her? What could have happened to her? Do you think she was murdered? Do you think she died of overdose? Do you think she died of um, something poisonous? Do you think she took her own life given that she was battling depression? And then why was she bleeding? I don't know, guys. What do you think? I really want to hear your comments. So do comment. Do talk to me. I love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah. Do stay safe. Keep yourselves safe. Um, there is COVID out there. Keep your families safe. Keep your loved ones safe. Do what you need to do to protect yourself and your families. Be blessed and goodbye.